Another critical component that you need when you're doing bead weaving is obviously a needle to use with your thread. And uh, there actually are a surprising number of options that you have for beading needles. Now I do suggest that you use an actual beading needle. Uh, there are all sorts of different sewing needles and quilting needles and tapestry needles and all sorts of things like that uh, out there on the market. But beading needles are made specifically for beaders. They're sizes that will match up with uh, instructions when you're looking at them in magazines or books or in certain people's patterns. Uh, they will usually recommend a size needle that you need and the beading needle sizes match up with that. So that's one of the reasons I suggest the beading needles. Uh, there's basically three major manufacturers that are out there that I, I am familiar with. Um, let me show you what they are. John James needles are what I learned on and they were are made in England. Uh, they for a period, um, I would say a couple, it's been at least four or five years now, for a while they started having them made in China. And uh, I, when I first learned on them, they were fabulous needles and I had no problem with them whatsoever. Never broke a needle. And then when they started manufacturing them in China, and, and you can tell where they were manufactured by looking on the back of the package, uh, all of a sudden I started breaking needles left and right. And breaking a needle is no fun because it ends up, sometimes you can actually hurt yourself when it breaks and plus sometimes it can cause problems with your beadwork and that kind of thing. So I stopped using John James needles when they moved their manufacturing to China. They realized the errors of their ways pretty quickly and now if you look at current packaging it will say made in England and they are now gone back to a more sturdy needle that you can trust again. So if you're going to buy John James needles uh, you might want to look at the package if you're looking at it in person make sure that it's the made in England ones because they're still the Chinese ones out there. Uh, but if it's online you might even want to email the online source and make sure that they're the made in England ones. Pony needles are a, a slightly less expensive version of needles and uh, this is what I use in all of my kits. My, I include these in my beading kits is the ponies and it's what I use most often at home uh, is the pony brand of needles. And then a couple of years ago uh, now we've had a brand new manufacturer come out of uh, Japan and it's the Tulip Company and they, their needles come in these cute little test tubes and they're more expensive. You get four needles, uh, I think it retails for $4.95 for the sizes that I use which are their size 10 and their size 11. $4.95 for four needles, but what's great about these needles is that they do not bend. And what I mean by that is, let me show you this needle here. This is one that I've been working with and see how it's got this distinct bend to it. That is a pony needle that I was using and anytime I'm using a size 12 pony needle, I can pretty much guarantee you by the time I'm done with my project, and I'll show you just kind of how easy it is to bend this, I will end up having bent it at a 90 degree angle, just like that in my hand because, uh, because of the way I'm you know, mo maneuvering it in and out of the beads. So basically I go through one needle a project if I'm using the pony needles, which isn't a problem, big problem because they are so inexpensive. A uh, pack of 25 I sell on my website for $2. So they're not expensive, but it's just a pain in the butt because you're always throwing away needles. The beauty of the tulip needles is that uh, I will lose a size 12 tulip needle before I bend it. And they actually have a size 11, which is an unusual size. I use the 11 most often. Uh, size 10 is a little bit bigger. One of the reasons to use a size 10 needle, and this is true of all three of these different brands, is they come in, so the John James and the Pony come in 10s and 12s. The tulips come in 10s, 11s, and 12s. The 12s in the tulips are significantly more expensive and that's why I go to, I use the 10s and the 11s most often. Um, one other th little thing about the needles is sizing. And a size 10 needle will be a little bit thicker. 
Uh, you won't be able to bend it in your hand quite as easily, uh, which doesn't mean you can't bend it while you're beating with it, but it's, it's a little more sturdy. So it's, it's also got a bigger eye, which means it's easier to thread your needle. Uh, however, if you're using a lot of small beads, and going through their, their multiple times with multiple passes, you're going to start having a problem with size 10 needle. And so that's when you would want to go down to a size 12 needle. A 12 needle has a lot more flex to it. And that's why when I use those 12s, I get those real bendy ones. Uh, it, it does have a smaller eye to it, so you're going to have a little bit more difficulty getting your thread threaded in there. It's But it's not impossible. Uh, so that's a way to get more passes through a small bead. And then they also make what they call sharps. And sharps are little, you'll notice the difference in length here, sharps are little short needles. And frequently women who come from a quilting background are familiar with the sharps. Uh, so they're just smaller. They still come in size 10, size 11. Uh, I'm sorry, size 10, size 12s, but just the shorter ones. So you might want to experiment with the two sizes and see which is more comfortable for you, the long or the sharp. I actually very rarely use the sharp because it makes my hand cramp if I use them too often. But women who come from, like I said, from a quilting background who are real comfortable with the shorter needle, uh, that's an easier, easier needle for them to use. When a sharp is really uh, a good thing to have around is when you have a tight turn or you're having trouble getting an angle in your bead weaving, having a shorter needle can sometimes help you out there. Uh, you also, and this is something that I don't have with me here, but there are also size 13 needles. And size 13 needles are the, for those of us who love things that are little teeny tiny. And that means little teeny tiny beads. These days, the holes in size 15 beads or 13 charlottes are better than they used to be. And so you usually can get away with a size 12 needle. But sometimes you're going to have those tight little spots and you'll need to go down to a size 13 needle. And you really, really have to flatten that end of your fire line or your thread to be able to get it through that, that uh, that eye on a size 13. So for you beginners, I would really suggest 10s, 11s, 12s, stick with those. And then as you get more proficient and start getting into some more detail work, then you might want to start looking at the size 13 beads. I have uh, all of these different brands on my available for sale on my website. I want to add one last thing, and that is I have had some questions from people about whether you can use a big eye needle using bead weaving. Uh, my answer is you can, but you really kind of don't want to. Uh, the reason being that a big eye needle will chew up your thread at the edges, and it causes weak spots in your thread. Uh, and then also because it's so much longer than one of our beading needles, uh, you'll have trouble getting some, doing some of the maneuvering. So I highly suggest not using a big eye needle and going with one of the beading needles that I've talked about here today. I hope that helps you. Uh, we don't want you to have any obstacles to becoming part of our little beady world. So let's see what happens. Thanks. <laughs>